This lecture video is to give you a background on logic model and the instructions for your individual assignment 5. This week, you will learn the benefits of conducting a logic model. We'll describe the elements of a logic model and how to create a logic model for an activity or program in your organization. And we'll lastly describe what makes the logic model most valuable. The benefits of conducting a logic model is that it integrates planning, implementation, performance measures, and evaluation. It allows all the stakeholders to know what are the activities and effects in this organization so they could prevent any misunderstanding and mismatch between activities and impact. It helps the organization have clarity from the process. It keeps the staff, faculty, managers, and stakeholders focused on the outcomes. It can also help planners prioritize what's the most effective activities in directing resources. It is based on evidence-based models and practice wisdom to design and refine a program. It reviews data that's needed and a framework for understanding the data. However, there are some limitations and pitfalls of a logic model. Logic models makes the program theory clear, but not necessarily proven. It takes time to complete. Without data, the utility is limited. What is the value of logic model? Well, it helps measure what can get done. If you don't measure the results and outcomes, you can't really tell whether you're successful. And if you can't see success, how can you give reward? And if you can't reward success, you could probably be rewarding failure. And without seeing success, you can't really learn from it or correct from it. If you can demonstrate the outcomes and resources and results, you can win the public support in having more funding, more resources, and stakeholders involved in this program, campaign, or project for the future. In the workforce, a logic model may have many names, but the components that makes up a logic model across these different names are all very similar. It can sometimes be called as a roadmap, a pathway, a blueprint, a program framework, a program theory, a theory or model of change, these are all examples of a logic model. Now that you know the value of a logic model, let's move on to how to display logic models. This is a graphical display of boxes and arrows to indicate the relationships and linkage between the different components of a logic model. In a logic model, you can define the problem, the inputs, the outputs, and the outcomes and impacts. Sometimes you may even refer to the resources as a starting point as opposed to the problem. Any shape is possible. You can have a very circular dynamic, and in this, in this display, it is very similar to a storyboard, one arrow pointing to the next component. The level of detail depends on your organization. It can be very simple, complex, and depends on the need. What is in a logic model? This is the basic logic model components. It allows the agency to envision its mission and goals. It describes the conditions, conducts an environmental scan to define the problems and the needs, and to understand what is the program theory. The components are listed below. It describes the inputs, the outputs, the outputs, and the outcomes. Sometimes the beginning of a logic model defines the problem or the resources that an agency has. And what is the problem or resources that defines the inputs? And from these inputs, what can be led to different activities? And what are the goals and outputs from these activities. And from these outputs, what is the overall outcome measures? 
and what is the impact? Short term, middle term, and long term. Using this logic model, you can then conduct an evaluation of the outcomes and the process. Let's dive more deeply into the logic of public health. In this diagram, this is to showcase some of the key questions you want to ask as you're conducting a logic model. First, you want to ask these critical questions, how? It is driven by a forward logic-driven method, by asking, but why? or if-then thinking, starting from the condition or the problem. Then conduct a reverse logic with but how, starting from the vision's end. The next question is who? Who is this logic model dependent on? And who are the constituents that will be impacted? And when? What is the timing of implementing this program or project? We'll give you more concrete examples. We first began by examining the if-then statement. This is an example of a logic model of public health. Let's start with the problem. There are people getting very sick in this location. As a public health agency, you may want to investigate. So you may conduct a logic model as you're investigating. Let's start with this event. If we inspect restaurants, then conditions in the restaurants don't create unsafe food. If conditions in the restaurants don't create unsafe food, then public is sold food that is safe to eat. If public is sold food that is safe to eat, then there are fewer incidents of foodborne illnesses. Notice that each event that is displayed here begins with an if-then statement. This showcases the reason why do we do this, and this helps describe the logic of an event, the process. Let's move on to the next question. Now that we describe the overall if-then statements, let's dive into the practical aspects. Is But how do we do this? Now let's revisit our same model. Let's begin from the bottom. There are fewer incidents of foodborne illnesses, but how? How do we achieve this? How do we know public is sold food that is safe to eat? How do we know conditions in the restaurants don't create unsafe food? And how do we inspect restaurants? Notice that you, at the bottom left, there's indicators of how to do this. We can initiate a specific number of inspections during a month and understand what is the critical number of violations. And if there's a percentage of critical violations corrected within 24 hours, that may prevent a foodborne illness outbreak. And also examining the number of foodborne outbreaks that is occurring in a location. Let's dive into the details of the model. The first component is inputs. Inputs describes the resources invested in the program. This can include the staff, volunteers, time, money, material, equipment, Anything like that. The second component of a logic model is described as the activities. The activity describes what the program does. For example, if your organization provides counseling sessions or conducts workshops on heart diseases or does inspections or distributes smoking sensation materials, these are activities that are driven by the inputs. Activities are dependent on the inputs. Notice the direction of where these components are located. The activity is located after the inputs. So therefore, notice that the activities is located after the inputs. This tells you that activity is highly dependent on the resources and inputs that's available. So before you describe your activities and investing in designing activities for your program, you need first to understand what are the inputs, the resources that your organization has, because the inputs will direct the type of activities that's possible from your organization. The third item of the logic model is defined as the outputs. Outputs measure what the program does and who the program reaches. For example, the numbers of workshops held, the numbers of brochures, the number of counseling sessions, the numbers of parents served, the numbers of students 
visited, school visited, the numbers of neighborhoods reached. These are outputs. You could th think of these as the type of measurements that your program needs to do in order to continue its mission, to get funding, or to reach its constituents. The last item of the logic model is defined as the outcomes. Outcomes shows the program's theory of change. It describes the desired in individual, families, or community change and can be measured. You can measure in terms of the time. You can define it as short term, mid term, and long term. The change in learning, the change in action, the change in conditions. For example, in the short term measurement of an outcome, you can measure the change in learning, the knowledge, the attitude, the skills gained from the community. The midterm outcome could be defined as the change in action. Do you see any behavior change, policy, practice changes? And last is the long term outcomes. For example, the change in conditions. Do you see a different environment? Do you see long term mortality and mobility rates going down or going up? Quality of life. Once you create your logical model and the components, you want to evaluate the impact of your logic model program. For example, you can measure the process outcome. Do you see changes in ways it's done? Do you notice any timelessness, changes, customer service, effectiveness? What are the impact outcomes? Do you see change in learning outcomes, actions, and conditions? Do you see changes in knowledge, attitude, skills, and behavior, policy, and practice changes? And you can also measure health outcomes. Do you see change in population health, health behavior, determinants, and status? Here is a summary of ways to measure your outcomes. Outcomes should be realistic, achievable, directly related to the program activities, clearly written. If you notice, this is very similar to our SMART definition, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time. So make your outcome smart. Putting it all together, this is an example of illustrating the different components of your logic model in a graphical way. For your individual assignment five, you're going to bring together all you've learned so far from this course into designing a program that you describe in week nine discussion board. Remember I asked all of you to describe a public health event that you want to initiate an awareness, a campaign, a program, or a project, and the skills in leading and motivating your constituents to be a part of this program. Let's examine that if this was a real case, that you were able to get funding to support this program. How would you evaluate the outcomes? How would you design this program? Or you could use a logic model. Describe more specifically this public health initiative that you described in week nine's assignment, the discussion board assignment. First define your questions. The if then, but how. Then describe the inputs that's necessary to run your organization. The activities that will be driven by the inputs, the resources, the funding, the time, the personnel, and the outputs that would be derived from these activities. These would be the more intermediate act outputs driven from the activities. And then once these outputs are obtained, what's the overall outcome? What's the short-term, mid-term, and long-term outcome? What type of impact do you want to see? What are different outcome measurements you want to examine? You may want to examine the process outcome, the impact outcome, and the health outcome. After you define your logic model, the different inputs, activities, outputs, and outcomes, next you want to evaluate your logic model. There's two steps in this evaluation. First is the process evaluation and the outcome evaluation. The process evaluation asks these specific questions. How is the program implemented? Is the program at capacity? 
Are activities delivered as intended? Are participants being reached as intended? What are the participants' reactions? The outcome evaluation measures the extent to where the desired changes are occurring and for whom. Is the program making a difference? What seems to work? What isn't working? What are unintended outcomes? And are we doing the right activities? When you work on your individual assignment five, you will first design your logic model, define the components, inputs, activities, outputs, and outcome in terms of short term, mid term, and long term. And then imagine what would be the ways to evaluate the process and the outcome. Here are the instructions for your individual assignment five. First, select a public health program you want to implement. I suggest that you visit the discussion nine board, the one that you suggested as a public health initiative awareness campaign that you would like to do during the public health week. You got a lot of great feedback from your classmate, so I would say start from there. However, if you would like to change your public health topic and program for this assignment, that's fine. Pick one that you're passionate about. This is a great opportunity for you to learn a very valuable tool, a logic model. Because in evaluation of public health programs, if you were to get a job in this area, this is a critical tool. So it's an important time for you to learn this tool now. Use this diagram as a way to guide you in how to design your logic model. First, write out the theory, the inputs, list the activities, the outputs, and the outcomes, and indicators of measurements. Why do you want to have the indicators of measurement? This will be very helpful in your step two, the evaluation of your logic model. With the indicators that you are going to define from this model, you can then evaluate the process and then the outcomes. These are two very distinct ways of measuring your logic model. Because let's say you're able to achieve your outcome, but was the process appropriate? Is it suitable to be expanded or generalizable? Or maybe your process was perfect, but yet it didn't achieve the outcomes that you intended. Why? Maybe your outcomes were unrealistic expectations, then you may want to modify the outcome measurements. This allows you to define where the problem is and where your strength is. Is it in the process or is it in achieving the outcome? Enjoy this assignment five. This will give you an opportunity to practice. When you are working on your capstone project or your practicum activities, and you're asked to do a logic model, you'll feel comfortable because you have the experience and the tool that you learn from this course.